Hello students of Dynamics, this is Dr. Dan Baker with an example video that's going to pick up where our overview video of rigid body Newtonian kinetics left off. And once again, we're looking at fixed axes rotation. So the example we'll look at today is the following. We have a fixed axis pin over here on the left end. And we have a fairly simple rigid body, just a slender rod. Okay, so this is a 20 kilogram slender rod that is three meters long so fairly lightweight and long and it is under the following forces or couples we have both a 60 newton meter couple which is applied about the fixed axis pin, we'll call this point O. And we're also given some information on this problem that there's an initial angular velocity, so we call this omega one, is equal to five radians per second. Okay, so moving fairly rapidly, would actually rotate almost one time per second. Right, because we know this is technically a frequency, and so basically five radians per second gives us almost one revolution. One revolution would be 6.28 radians per second. And so we want to know the acceleration of this rod. So we want to find the alpha of the rod. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can take a look at this problem. Both of them will deal, or we need to start with, a free body diagram and a kinetic diagram. Uh, another thing to note is this is the side view. Hence, this is in a vertical plane, just like you're looking at it on your screen, as long as your screen is, is vertical. So with that, we know that we're gonna have a weight force. And so this weight force is going to be the 20 kilogram mass times the gravitational constant. I'll use 9.81 meters per second squared because we are in SI units. We'll additionally need to add in our pin forces, call this O sub T and O sub N. Now in this case, they are aligned along the X and Y, but as you think about the tangent normal we're looking at really here, we're looking at the tangent normal of the centroid. And so you can think of the centroid, our T is gonna be going downward, because that's the direction of our motion. A fundamental we could map onto here if we wanted to, that our velocity, our V bar, is dropping vertically downward at this instant. And then our normal is gonna go back toward the center of curvature, and the center of curvature in this case is our pin O. And so this is gonna be our normal axis direction. Okay, so our T and our N. A couple more things to add on to the free body diagram portion. We do need to add this couple. 60 newton meters and then let's go ahead and plot onto here our kinetic terms our kinetic terms would have one acceleration of the centroid here tangential so call this a bar sub t and then also our acceleration normal a bar sub n now given this fixed axis pin over here at point O and given that our acceleration we're assuming is dropping downwards with the weight, then we do need to draw our assumed alpha direction. I'll write it here as the full inertia term I bar times alpha. And this is gonna be negative from the right hand rule. Okay, so let me just pull a side note here, negative from my right hand rule. So I need to make sure to bring that into my equation as I'm working through my computations. Okay, so that's a combined free body diagram plus kinetic diagram, the purple terms. So that gives us the basis. Now, I talked about there's a couple different ways we could solve this problem. The two different ways are essentially focusing on different points where we could sum moments about. Okay, so we'll go with version one. And in version one, we're going to sum moments about our fixed axis pin O. And so writing out the equation, we can say sum of moments about point O as a vector is equal to my moment of inertia about point O times alpha. Now I could either leave it just as my I bar. Let's go ahead and take a look over at our mass moment of inertia table and kind of talk through the process of this mass moment inertia. 
All right, so here is my slender rod. Now, what you'll notice about the slender rod is it actually has some equations for the mass moment inertia about a couple different locations. One of those locations is the center, point G, and one of those locations is the end point, which would correspond to point O. And so if we're looking at the mass moment inertia about the end point, we can use the one-third ml squared. If we're using the mass moment inertia about the centroid, we need to use the one-twelfth ml squared. Now the difference between these two equations is they've just had the parallel axes theorem transfer done for you this distance of L over 2. Okay, so you could actually do this transformation if you wanted to, or it gives it to you on the equation sheet. So jumping back over to our problem, we could go ahead and plug in here the one third ml squared for my moment inertia about that end point. So we'll go ahead and use that version of it. So plugging in the values, we need to sum our moments on the left side of that equation. So summing the moments, we have a negative 60 newton meters from the couple. Negative because it is negative from the right hand rule as you wrap your fingers around your fingertips in the direction of the arrowhead of that couple. We additionally have a um, weight moment. So there's gonna be an R cross F moment coming from the weight force here of 20 times the gravitational constant 9.81. So the distance is going to be half the length of the rod. So it's gonna be 1.5 meters times the weight force, which is 20 times 9.81. And looking at this again is gonna be negative from the right hand rule. My R vector goes from R over here to the centroid. The force pushes it down. Therefore, I end up with a negative moment from the right-hand rule, so this will be a negative. And then we get into the right-hand side of our equation. We're going to plug in our one-third. The mass of our rod was 20 kilograms. And then we have our length squared, so three squared. Just noting that this term here is just basically coming in. There's my moment of inertia about the end point. And then the last term we need to put in is our alpha. Now, this alpha, when we go to plug it in, we need to list this out as a negative alpha because we've assumed that the alpha is going in this direction here, which is negative from the right-hand rule. Now, if you put it as a positive alpha, you'd get a negative value in the problem, basically telling you your assumed direction was incorrect. It is a best practice to make sure that if you don't know either this a sub t and or the alpha that you match them up. So if we're assuming that a sub t is going downward, we better make sure that our alpha is going with it and not against it. So we just have one unknown in this equation, which is alpha, and we can back solve that out and find that our alpha is equal to 5.90 radians per second squared. Keep in mind that all alphas are in radians per second squared, all omegas in radians per second. It's consistent units no matter what your unit system. So that gives us one version of solving for alpha. It's actually the fastest of the two versions. Let's take a look at another one where we are going to some moments about the centroid. Okay, so version number two, we are going to some moments about the centroid point G. So we're going to expose some additional unknowns as we sum our moments about the centroid. We're going to expose the unknowns of OT and ON. So this is the method you want to go through if you're asked to solve for those. So let's go ahead and we'll sum our forces in the normal direction. This is going to equal the mass times the omega squared in the negative R of G relative to O. Let's go ahead and draw that position vector. So of point G relative to point O is gonna go from O over to G. Okay, so R of G relative to O starts at the fixed axis pin, goes out there to the centroid. So putting in the values into this problem, again, that distance is just gonna be 1.5. As we think about its direction, it's actually gonna be in the negative N direction. Right, so if we think about writing this R of G relative to O in tangent and normal components, we can write out that it will be equal to zero in the tangent, and it turns out to be a negative 1.5 in the normal, and that'd be in meters. Okay, negative 1.5 again, because it's opposing our normal axes, which is going to the left, our position vector is going to the right. So now coming back to our equation, we can say that our only unknown in the n direction is O sub n. It is going in the 
um, assumed negative direction as drawn. And so this is equal to the mass again of 20 times my omega was five. I'm gonna square that five radian per second. So now to incorporate this r position vector, we know that it's going to be the negative of that position vector, but the position vector itself in the n direction is going to be a negative 1.5 meters. Okay, so we end up with a double negative. So double negative makes a positive. And we also see we have that negative floating over there on the left. And so we find that O sub n is equal to a negative value here of 750 newtons. Okay, so we could also say that O sub n is equal to 750 newtons. We initially assumed O sub n was in a negative n hat or a negative n direction. So we can write this as O sub n 750 newtons in the positive n direction, which is going to the left. Okay, so that's just a little side note there to explicitly talk about the direction of O sub n. Now, moving next into our sum of our forces in our t direction. Now, here again, we're going to use the mass times my alpha times 1.5, right? This coming from alpha cross r. And we are gonna to need to pay attention to essentially the sign on this a sub t. It'll turn out to be positive because of our axis system established. So moving through here, all of our forces in the t direction, we have two of them. Now we assumed that our o sub t was going upwards and t axis is going downwards. And so we need to list this as a negative o sub t and it'll be a positive weight force. Okay, so negative, O sub t opposing the tangent axis positive direction. Positive here are 20 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. Give me a Newton for my weight. And again, equal to our mass of 20, our alpha, which we could bring in um, from later computations. We also could pull it from the equation above, but I'll show you an alternate version even of that equation, times 1.5. And like I said, this whole term is going to be positive because it is going in the same direction as our t axes. Okay, so all signs coming from our axis system. And the last equation we could do is instead of, we're gonna sum our moments about the centroid, point G. Take a look at how this computation looks versus the sum of moments about the fixed axis pin. And so this is going to be sum of moments about G equals I times alpha. And so plugging values in here, we have again a negative 60 Newton meters from the couple. We also have the moment now from the vertical component of our pin force, O sub T, coming back over that distance of 1.5, and that force is going upwards. So the distance here again is 1.5 times O sub T. Now that force from the right-hand rule will be negative coming from G over to O and crossing into our assumed O sub T. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, we have our I bar. Now from our moment of inertia table, we know that this is 1 12th, our mass of 20, our length is three cubed. And so this term here is my I bar. And then again, I have an unknown alpha, but that alpha is in a negative direction for the right-hand rule, so negative alpha. So we end up with two equations and two unknowns in these bottom two. In both equations, we have O sub t, we also have alpha. And so they are linear equations. You could do either uh, into a matrix form or do some substitution, but we find we end up with alpha equal to the same value, 5.9 radians per second squared, and that we end up with O sub t, our vertical pin force of 19.05 newtons, and that turned out to be positive. So our assumed direction of upwards was correct. So fundamentally here, the weight force coming downwards, this moment coming downwards, O sub t is pushing back up. I think the most interesting term in this whole problem is actually that value of O sub n. Okay, this value of O sub n, 750 newtons. And it is actually coming back here to the left. We said it's going in the positive n direction. 
So this 750 newtons, what it is doing is it essentially holding firm to keep this inertia, which is the bar swinging downwards, um, into a circle. Right? You think about what is normal acceleration. Normal acceleration and a normal force in this case is going to be to keep a body moving in a curved path. And so we need that much force in order to keep this very long, three meter long, fairly light though, 20 kilograms rod moving in a curved path. And so as you're designing these type of systems, do keep in mind, do your computations, because you might end up with some very large normal forces, even though we're thinking about most of the motion going on vertically, in this case, very large normal force horizontal. So I hope that provides some solid context into how to solve one of these fixed axis rotation problems using Newtonian kinetics. Keep in mind when I say Newtonian kinetics is essentially an acceleration-based framework. As we move forward into work energy and impulse and momentum, we'll get into velocity-based frameworks. But all Newtonian problems will have an acceleration-based framework to work through. I hope you're having a great day today.